DDSN works with providers across South Carolina to ensure that those with spinal cord injuries have access to services they need. We spoke to individuals with spinal cord injuries who have benefited from our resources. Janice Harris is a gun violence victim and a spinal cord injury survivor. She now lives life in a wheelchair. This is her story. I was with a guy who called himself my friend and he ended up leaving me at the hotel room and going to rob a franchise, a restaurant franchise. When he came back to the room, he came back with the police. And they start banging on the door once he sat down. And I'm like, what's going on? And he like, I don't know. I told him I was leaving out the door and he said I can. But by the time I opened the door, he had his arm around my neck. And it was basically like a hostage situation on our way to the car. He kicked my legs to the car. By the time we got to the car and opened up the car door, the cops fired. They shot me and they shot him as well. They killed him. And I woke up two, three days later in ICU. And I ended up with oxygen in my throat with a trach and I ended up with a feeding tube. I was 18 days away from my 21st birthday. Janice reflected on the confusion she felt when she woke up at the hospital. I didn't realize I was paralyzed. It was one of the nurses that was checking my oxygen tank. And she told me when I woke up, she said, baby, please just don't try to move right now. You've been shot, just try to take it all in. And I did the opposite. And when I did the opposite, it was like my whole world came crashing down like you can't move. It was hard because I thought my life was over with. I actually tried to end my life a little bit that first year because I didn't want to live anymore because I didn't want to live in a wheelchair. I didn't think it was possible because I'm so used to going and going and going when I want to. Janice spoke about the adjustment period she went through. It probably took me a good three years because the first year and a half I got depressed. I didn't want to live like this. I felt like I couldn't live like this. So once I came back home, because I was in Georgia, I see you for three months. Then I was in the regular room for two months. I came back here for one month, Roger C. Peace. Then I ended up in New York in Goldwater Hospital for a year. So when I got back home to family and friends, that's what made me be able to start using my arms and my neck. Because at first I couldn't hold my neck up and I couldn't use my arms as well because my diagnosis was paralyzed from the neck down because of my injury. Janice's family had to adjust to her being injured. It was a change for them as well, because to this day, they still try to hand me like cups and stuff if I ask for something. So sometimes it still slips their mind that I'm in a wheelchair because my personality says I'm not in a wheelchair. As I always say, I'm just able, not disabled. I'm just able to do a little bit, but I can do a lot for my injury. <laughs> Soon after the injury, her family reached out for supports and services. Because I, we was raised on low income. So it followed over to me instead of my mother being over my Medicaid and things like that. I had to get Medicaid, food stamps, and Social Security for myself. Um, it was an easy process. It was y'all, the um, spinal cord disability. In the Husky waiver, they give me like my pampers and chucks and things that I need. It was an easy process and it was more needed, most definitely. Because as I say, I don't have any other income but Social Security. And I do everything mostly by myself, but if I need family to help, they will help. Janice spoke about how important it is that she receives support and supplies. Without my supplies, I probably have to go in the store and buy supplies and I couldn't afford that. So I would have to, and um, my incontinence, I really need them. Cause it's, it's, it's a hit and a miss some, a lot of times, you know. She had words for those who might be going through a similar injury. If you believe in the higher power, put your strength in God first and find others that will motivate you, that are like you, are similar to you, that's don't went through trauma with the body or anything. And also, life is not over. We can do all things. We can do it all, though. We just gotta get out here and be motivated to do so.
it's a new journey, but not really so much because I feel like I'm still the same as if I was on my feet. I'm just doing newer things in different ways now. She talked about how she used to be and how she used to treat people. I think I'm more calmer now and patient with people because I didn't have no patience and I don't think I was calm enough with people. You would say, if you cross me the wrong way, I would have an attitude and my mouth always spoke before I thought. So now I'm a sometimes I think before I speak type person and I, I think about other people's feelings before I say what I say, but before I did. She compared that with how she is now. If you've ever been on your feet and been independent, you take it for granted. You take it for granted and then you see that it wasn't all about what you was, your perception of life was. It, it becomes different because you have to be different. You have to do different. You have to act different and think different because you got to humble yourself because you never know who may need, you may need to come and help you. So, you know, you can't be nasty towards people. And, you know, it's always good to talk to strangers and stuff because that opens doors to other things as well. And then you might learn something about yourself through somebody else. It bettered me and better my per perception of life. It most definitely did. Because I did take life for granted. I really did. Because my favorite saying was, I will be okay and I will be back. And these days, you can't really say that, no matter the situation. Janice had words of advice for those who are not injured. Don't take life for granted. And those who are in your life that are disabled, um, you can also help them mentally, not even not just physically. Because there are up and down days, and if the family and friends are around, it'll be more updates than down. Janice shared what the injury made her realize about herself and talked about the goals she is now pursuing. I learned I'm stronger than I thought I was. And I learned that my brain capacity is uh, bigger than I thought it was. <laughs> um, I am at University of Phoenix for Human Services, but right now I'm doing Master's in Science of Psychology. And I want to do Human Services because I started out first as an at-risk teen. I was in the Department of Juvenile Justice from 14 to 17. But then after that, I also came into contact with people who was homeless or people who just needed help mentally. And I see it's a lot of things and stigma when it comes to mental health. And I just want to be a help of all parts of that. Anything that can help people when it comes to resources and things that will help their well-being, I'm all for it. Because I was helped. And I just want to return a favor. Finally, Janice talked about why she believes she should help others. Because like I said, I believe in a higher power. I believe in God. And I believe I was moving too fast at a teenage, in a teenage life. Because I went from 15 to 17, 14 to 17 in the DJJ system. Cutting off house arrest bracelets, going on a run. Doing it all. I did it all. But it was the injury that made me realize that wasn't where I was going. And I needed to go. And I feel like God just set me down. I'm going to just set you down. I'm not going to take you out. I'm just going to set you down. I save you to save others. That's how I feel it. That's how it's working. <laughs>